Hello and welcome to the Cardiac Cats YouTube channel. I'm your host Jacob Shorba and today I finally have something to talk to you guys about regarding the offseason. It's incredible. I mean, other than the draft, right? But we've actually made a move. The first player has been released from the team. Now, I don't know why they chose to do it on his birthday. No clue. Um, they literally waited like a week longer than we've ever seen them wait to make a move. And this was a guy I felt like, honestly, there shouldn't even been a debate. And I hate saying that because I, I like Fadakasi as a person, right? And it just, the reality is like what you paid him wasn't worth it, right? Just, just was not worth it. But why do you release him on his birthday? I have no clue. I could rant about it. If you go on my Twitter, you can see me rant about it. And yeah, but first move of the off season, right? So let's talk about it. Let's talk about what this means. Um, cap implications for this year and beyond, because there is another side to this that actually has not been talked about yet. So um, we're going to do that. We're going to talk about all those things, but I'm going to make this clear to start, guys. Full runs who fought Akasi was not a player that you were going to keep around in 2024. There's a lot of reasons why. So I'll give you a look at PFF. Um, just how he graded out in 2023. Now, in 2022, his first year, didn't play a ton, was hurt quite a bit, and he was okay when he was on the field. It wasn't terrible, right? But he was okay. Comes in this year. Played the entire season. I mean, you can see it here. Every single week he's taken snaps. He never had a game where he took less than 10 snaps. So he was on the field. Being completely honest with you guys, I couldn't tell you was on the field until week 17. I noticed him. And that's bad. That's not what you want to see. I hate it. I'd prefer he was a great player, right? But it's just the reality. And so, like, you've got a couple performances in here where, yeah, he grades out really well. He gets an 89, an 83. The reality is you were paying him basically eight million a year. That's what the number really is. You don't earn eight million a year if you don't stand out in any way. And the big thing with Fadakasi is supposed to be run defense. It's what he was so good at in New York. And you can see that when we go down, we look at like 2019, 2020 grades out really high. But where is that strength? It's all on run defense. That's why he's really good at. Then you go and look at games like against the Tennessee Titans, where a Derrick Henry on his final legs beats the living crap out of the Jaguars. They can't tackle him, can't do anything. That starts with the interior of the defensive line. And yeah, it goes from there. I mean, sure, like cornerbacks got to be better in run defense. Safety's got to do a better job. But this is the primary guy, right? Along with Devon Hamilton, like these are your guys you want to stop the run. It was not good enough. Now, we all know that the Jaguars need to add to the interior of the defensive line. And that's another reason why this move is very obvious, because you not only save money, but you also have to consider that you need the snaps available for a new player to come in and fill. It would make no sense, even ignoring salary cap implications, to keep full runs of Fadakasi, because you're going to have Devon Hamilton back. Fadakasi would take, what, 400, 500 snaps again? And then what's left for the next guy? I mean, there's not a lot of time out there if uh, Hamilton's healthy again. So you need to have the snaps available to upgrade. And you obviously have the reasons of the salary cap. So this was a pretty obvious one. Um, and, and like I said, I'm not trying to just trash him as a player. Like, we're just being honest about this. Did not go well in Jacksonville. Maybe it's a scheme thing. Maybe he'll go back to New York and, and play really well. I hope he does. I hope he goes somewhere has a good career, it just wasn't good enough here, and you can't justify paying it. None of the money was guaranteed at this point either, so this is a move they absolutely had to make, and it's the first move of the offseason, because no matter how hard you try to convince me, removing Sammy Reyes from the retired reserve list doesn't count. I mean, we, we got all the way to March 4th, and, and this is the first thing we've done. So we're going to have a lot more videos like this. Definitely want to let you know that. But salary cap let's talk about that next so everything's saying oh you you save three and a half million right move saves three and a half million that is not all you save it is important to note that when you cut a player who has void years on his contract you cut him early you don't save as much money right because you're taking on that dead cap hit from those years 
but you save money during those seasons because that's money that would be against the cap those years that you push down the road. When you cut them early, the void years go away and all of a sudden the cap gets put on this year. That's why Fadakasi, despite earning $8 million, and that comes from base salary and non-prorated bonuses, all money he had to collect still, he does not have all that saved this year because, like I said, dead cap comes into the season that's been pushed down the road. So what happens, you save this number, right? The $3.5 million. You go to 2025, you also save this number, which will be your dead cap you would have had that is now put on the 2024 season. So let's take a look at this, how this impacts the cap. You'll see first number and the second number will change from this, assuming they do a pre-June 1st cut. So both numbers go up. Now they can choose to do a post-June 1st cut. I do not think it's necessary, if I'm being completely honest. But if they chose to do that, oh, sorry, not trade. Let's, yeah, there we go. You'll see the first number changes. Then you save that $8 million or so dollars, and the next year it stays the same. Because you're keeping those cap hits down the road. You're just not paying them the money you would have earned this year. So there's two options. Realistically, this is probably a pre-June 1st cut. So that's the impact on the salary cap. And an important thing to note, because I see a lot of people who argue and say like, well, do you want to cut Rayshon Jenkins? It's only $5 million, right? That's the number here. That's not the truth. Because the next year, you also have the, the money that you save. So that's the way it works. I mean, it's the same thing for Zay Jones. It's not a matter of, are you just trying to save $4 million? You're saving like $8 million. And if you want that money to all be saved this year, if you're arguing that's all about this year, you do the post-June 1st cut, or you prorate someone else's contract down the road. So that's how that works. So $8 million saved over two seasons. That, that is what happens from this move. So hopefully you guys understand that. Uh, if you have any questions, absolutely ask me. I try to know what I can. I try to learn every year. Um, I feel like I've got a good grasp on most things. The only thing that is still confusing me is like compensatory picks. Um, I definitely need to do more studying there because that part of the NFL is crazy. But that's all we got, guys. First move of the offseason. Um, I will tell you this. We will definitely have a video tomorrow or Wednesday about Josh Allen because he will either be extended or he'll be franchise tagged. We'll break it down, talk about the implications. That'll probably be the next thing. But that's all I've got for you guys today. Hope you have a great rest of your day. And finally, go Jags.